You got any kind of employment identification? Dude, they don't give me that when you work at the field. Really? You don't have like an access card or an ID badge or anything from the facility that you work at? I don't. I know you're not a U.S. Marshal. I'm a U.S. Marshal. Right. I know for a fact, 100%, you are not with the U.S. Marshals. You look like me, you're impersonating a police officer. Oh, no, sir, I'm not impersonating, sir. Federal agents, state troopers, and sheriff's deputies. No matter which brand of law enforcement a person may try to impersonate, they can be slapped with felony charges, huge fines, and even jail time. We're breaking down the top seven times alleged criminals pretended to be officers. Welcome to After Hours, presented by Law and Crime. I'm Sam Goldberg. First, we begin in Oklahoma County, Oklahoma. It's New Year's Day 2023, around 10 a.m. A local police officer and a sheriff's deputy have stopped a driver at a gas station after reports that a young man might be impersonating a deputy. Do you have any weapons in the car or anything like that? Like a gun or anything? I don't even have a gun. Okay. I'm 19 years old. I ain't gonna talk to you. If this is gonna cause problems in the truck's over there, I'm just gonna take out the best, and I'm from Tennessee. That's Jackson Jones. He lives in Tennessee, but told police he's in Oklahoma to visit his mother. Jones was in a tactical vest with the word sheriff across the front. The officer speaking with him find it odd that Jones is wearing all that gear in his car. You're a deputy sheriff? I, I, well, I mean, I work at the sheriff's office. Okay. So, I mean, what? Were you a corrections officer for yes. the sheriff's office? Okay. Why do you wear a vest outside of the facility? Is this an agency I mean, vehicle or is this your personal vehicle? This is my Kia. Okay. It's just a little odd because whenever I worked in the jail, I took my crap off, especially if I was taking a long drive from Tennessee. The officers want some kind of proof that Jones is actually a member of the Campbell County Sheriff's Office. You got any kind of employment identification? Dude, they don't give me that when you work at the jail. Really? You don't have like an access card or an ID badge or anything from the facility that you work at? I don't. Well, you realize wearing the sheriff on your chest is basically impersonating law enforcement, whether or not you're carrying a gun. Okay, but are you commissioned to be carrying a gun and do you have arrest power? I, I don't. What do you mean? I don't even have a gun. That, that's beside the fact you're wearing a patch that says sheriff. Jones then shows the deputy his pay stub from several weeks before, which does say it came from the county jail. The deputy asks Jones about the incident they first responded to, a report that Jones was acting odd in a parking lot of the McDonald's next door. So did you get out of your car or something here in the parking lot? Okay, I got out of the car. There's, yeah. There's a truck that he, he, he looked at me. That's all I did. I, I never, I never, <coughs> never said anything like law enforcement was or nothing. I, he, he looked at me and he was laughing. So I just like go to his car and I was like, did you need me or something like that? That's it. And I just like walked away. The officers put Jones in the back of the squad car for the time being and search his car. It seems the officers might be willing to let him go this time. Or wearing what he's wearing is, I guess, not. It's not. It's, it's kind of protected type thing. Yeah. Yeah. He, he hadn't. He hadn't really crossed the law yet. Get there. But he's, he's walking a fine line. But when they get back to his SUV, Jones's story starts to unravel. You haven't been to work in two weeks? So you haven't been to work in two weeks, but you're wearing the uniform pants, duty style looking shoes, and a vest carrier? Well, I mean, like, I'm trying to go back to work, but. Where'd you get the vest carrier from? Did you order it online? No. From a friend, or I didn't get it out. bought it at a store. Uh, it's a police store over there in Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, okay. and you can only be law enforcement get it. I, I bought it like four months ago. That's when another vehicle pulls up and wants to speak with the deputy. Turns out the driver had a run in with Jones that same exact morning. Because he was dressed like a cop. Yeah. He had a sheriff thing, but it had sheriff written on the side right here. Right. And I live on 62 off of Adam Road. He was sitting in a driveway, 251. Yeah, right beside 62 Highway. And I pulled up and I was staring at him because he was in there kind of too high. And I was like, we live on a one uh, one way in, one way out. And you know, we all, we always are watching for cars. And I sat there and I was staring at him. And uh, I stared about 10 minutes of staring at him. And I'm like, man, he's this guy. It's kind of odd. He's in, in, in our neighbor's driveway. 
and I sat there and stared at him and stared at him. And I drove off, and he got right behind me, so I followed him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was driving along. He was right on my, right on me. And I was like, oh, I'm going to pull this on. Like, huh. This is from over by the Hera Axon. From there all the way down to Sonic. All the way to Sonic and Hera. Okay. And I pulled in Sonic, he pulled in behind me. He gets out, and I said, can I help you, sir? He's like, well, uh, I was wondering what, what was your problem? You were staring at me over in the, in the driveway. And I said, yeah, I was kind of curious who you was because it's kind of odd that uh, I didn't know who you was. I was kind of curious. I lived down the road. I was kind of seeing what was going on. And I was staring at you to see who you was. He goes, I'm a, I'm a uh, undercover cop for Wellston. And I run, uh, my partner, I run with the highway patrolman, uh, Wellston. <laughs> Okay. And uh, I said, so, uh, just be curious, uh, you look pretty young, how old are you? He was, I'm 22 years old, just turned 22. I was like, man, you're pretty young to be a cop, be a, an investigator. Right. And uh, I said, uh, what brings you to be a cop? Is it like, uh, is it in a family or whatever? And he was trying to just talk to him. And he goes, yeah, uh, uh, a lot of my family are cops and stuff. And that's what we come, I became a cop when I was 18. And then uh, he goes, uh, well, I got a call, I got to let you go. And then he left. And then when he left, he came towards, uh, by the, uh, bridge, uh, on a turnpike bridge. And he took the Yui and was trying to pull another car. He was trying to flash his lights at him. Really? And I, I didn't know if, if they pulled over or not, but he was flashing his lights like he was trying to pull him over. The officers realized Jones isn't just on the edge of impersonation. He'd actually pretended to be a cop and tried to pull someone over. So now Jones is under arrest. All right. Turn around and face the other way. Put your hands behind your back. You're under arrest for impersonating law enforcement, all right? And then you also have a charge for transporting an open container. Jones doesn't resist the arrest, but he does have a question for the officer, which then puts his inexperience front and center. We didn't confirm what we know now until we talked to the RP. Uh, so, huh? Reporting party. Okay, well that's because you're not law, law enforcement. It's a serious deal when you're impersonating a police officer, so. Well, I know, like, I don't know how long it is. I mean, first, I mean, since I don't have any criminal record, I mean, I don't. Yeah, it'll be up to the judge to decide that. All right. 19-year-old Jackson Jones was booked for false impersonation of a police officer and transporting an open container. Next, we're in Marion County, Florida. It's Monday, July 31st, 2023, around 5 p.m. A corporal was putting gas in his patrol vehicle when he heard an unusual siren. He saw a black pickup truck with a red and blue flashing lights moving around and cars driving through a red light. The deputy then initiates a traffic stop and tries to figure out what agency the driver works for. The man immediately shows the deputy a badge for the U.S. Marshal Service. See your other hand for me? Where are you headed to? Okay. You have your driver's license on? We'll see you with the purple lights. Yeah, they're the purple tonight. Where are you headed to? A shooting in Mary Hunt? Right away, the deputy senses something's off. So, the vehicle is your vehicle, is that correct? Yeah, okay. Yeah, because. I'm just looking, I'm looking for something to verify that you're a U.S. Marshal, all right? The deputy puts the driver on the phone with the Marshal Service liaison who works with the Sheriff's Office. Sir, what is your name? Gary Lambert. Okay, what district do you work out of? I work out of Texas, but they got me down, they got me down in Florida right now looking into uh, Marion Oaks. There's two gang members, two gangs out there that are riding on a four-wheeler with a pole on it, busting into people's houses. Yeah, exactly, I know exactly. Yeah, exactly. Derry Lambert is then placed into custody until law enforcement can figure out exactly what's going on. Just go ahead and turn around for me. Again, put your hands behind your back. For what? I'll explain it to you. So you're gonna be arrested for impersonating a police officer, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and read this to you, okay? Right. And who do you work for? Who are you employed by? United States Marshal, sir. U.S. Marshal, sir. Okay. Um, 
he told me that you don't have your credentials with you, but they're in your they're in my charger. In your charger, a work vehicle. Right. Okay. Who's the charger registered to? It's registered to the marshal service. Marshals. Okay. That's my personal vehicle. So why would the marshals outfit your personal vehicle with lights and sirens? In, in Texas, it's not like here. Okay. You, you don't have cars like this. We you have, have a Florida tag. I know. The deputy looks in Lambert's truck and finds it's outfitted with emergency siren equipment. The marshal service liaison Lambert spoke with on the phone comes down to the scene to try to talk with him in person. He questions Lambert repeatedly about his job, and Lambert continues to insist he's a U.S. marshal simply responding to a scene. I get a call on my cell phone. Hey, they see the foiler out there on the drone. Can you come help us? Who's that? So you called you? My squad in Texas. If you look through my phone, you'll see the 941 area code. By squad, what do you mean by squad? They sent three or four of us down here. Who is they? The Rangers. The Rangers? Which Rangers? Like the baseball team? No. Hell no. Okay, so what the Rangers? Rangers? The Marshals. The Marshals? Yeah. So what, um, where do you work out of Texas? Dallas. Dallas? Yes. What's your district? District. What do you mean? Well, we just if, have you're, if you're a U.S. Marshal, you would know you're this one. 641? Okay. When the Marshal insists on knowing what Lambert allegedly does for the Marshal Service, Lambert says he does, quote, raids. Despite being given multiple opportunities to come clean, Lambert decides to stick to his story. What do you do for the United States Marshals? <laughs> I normally just do raids. Raids? Yeah. Okay, who do you work for? I just told you twice. Like, okay, so where, do you work for the Fugitive Task Force? Do you work for the District Marshals? No. Do you, work, who do you I, work for? I work for the Task Force. You work for the Task Force? Like people running, who do raids. All I do is raids. Tell okay, me. listen to me for just a second. I'm going to give you a little bit of an out or whatever. Right. Um, I know you're not a U.S. Marshal. I'm a U.S. Marshal. Right. I know for a fact, 100%, you are not with the U.S. Marshals. Okay? okay? So I would just want to know why you would try to identify as a U.S. Marshal. Was it to, like, get around traffic? No. Okay, so what were you trying to do? I told you twice. I was responding to a call. With the U.S. Marshals? Yes. Derry Lambert was later booked into the Marion County Jail on multiple charges, including false impersonation of a law enforcement officer, unlawful use of blue lights, unlawful use of a badge, and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. Next, we're in Gwinnett County, Georgia, outside of Atlanta. It's July 1st, 2023. A deputy who's patrolling near a bowling alley and sports bar has been called to deal with a man who's drunk and belligerent. When the deputy approaches William Godsey, it's evident that Godsey is intoxicated. What's going on, man? Uh, what's up, bro? We have some trouble in here. Are we having trouble in That's here? That's what I've heard. Oh, God. Are, are you a Gwinnett County? Yep. Thank you. All right. You have a tab open? Do I or do I not? I don't know. I'm asking you. Who knows? The deputy then walks Godsey out to the parking lot and tries to figure out how the drunk man is going to get home. That's when Godsey's responses get even more bizarre. How did you get here? Who knows? So why are you being so uncooperative? I'm just trying to ask some simple questions, I man. I don't believe in alcohol. I don't believe in cops. I don't believe in meth. I don't believe in any of this. I believe in God. Sure. Godsey wants to know why the deputy even approached him in the first place. From what I've understood, you're threatening people, which could be disorderly conduct. What? So they're looking threaten? at a violation of law. Did I threaten anyone by killing or hurting anyone? As the back and forth continues, Godsey says something that will get him into some very serious trouble. I know the law. Okay. Then you Bro, understand. I, I, then you I'm, understand disorderly conduct and public I'm drunk. I'm state patrol. You're state patrol. I know a little bit more than. You. Do you have your ID? Do, do you need my ID? You're identifying yourself as a state trooper. I want your no, ID. Sir. You don't need my ID. I know a little bit more than you do. 
What's your state patrol badge number? I'm sorry. You identified yourself as a state trooper. What's your badge number? I know. That's not what you said. You said you were state patrol. Because okay. then you made a point to say that you know the law more than me. So I'm asking you if I you're do state know patrol. a little bit more than me. Well, what's your I badge know what's number? Going on in the world more than Are you a trooper? Are you a law enforcement officer certified in does the state of matter? Georgia? Yes, sir, it does. Godsey walks off into the parking lot, presumably to order a rideshare to come pick him up. But when the deputy goes to check up on him, Godsey isn't even making a phone call. Where are we at? You got a ride coming? Are you kidding me? What, what, what do I do? I can't go inside. I have to pee. That pretty much seals the deal for the officer. All right, William, step on out for me, please. Oh, yes, sir. Come to the back of the car. Oh, yes, sir. You are going to be placed under arrest for disorderly conduct tonight, okay? Okay. According to law enforcement, this could have just been a citation and maybe a night in jail for being disorderly. But because he stated he was a trooper, he's now facing a felony charge. William Godsey was then booked into jail on charges of in public intoxication and impersonating a public officer or employee. Next, let's stay in Georgia. This time we're in Ackworth, another suburb of Atlanta. On July 20th, 2022, an Ackworth police officer pulled over a white car, which activated its own set of emergency lights. The officer says the driver was later identified as Gerardson Mackey, who was earlier spotted using those same lights to try to get around a traffic jam. Hey, partner. Hi. Hey, I'm Officer Park with the Ackworth Police Department. How are you? Uh, the only reason why I'm pulling you over, uh, I guess y'all were, well, that's my chief of police right there. He saw y'all go around traffic. He was trying to figure out who, who y'all are with or what was going on. The police chief himself then shows up at the scene. Uh, I work, I'm off to the hero operator. Oh, off to yeah. the hero operator? How you doing, chief? Hey. I was, I'm off to the operator. I just working off for your detail. That's my ID. Uh -huh. The Georgia Department of Transportation started Hero before the 1996 Olympics, and now it has grown into a fully-fledged patrol of the state's major highways. The operators help clear wrecked vehicles and provide traffic control. Why is the car registered to an individual? That's mine. This is my car. So what are you doing with all these red lights? Sorry? Why all these emergency lights? Yes. And did I see you use an emergency light? Pull out into traffic on Lake Oh, no, I couldn't, I couldn't get you, Chief. Mackey says he also had his own company called Georgia Metropolitan, a service he claims provides escorts for funeral services. Who do you work for? This is my company. I'm an off-duty hero operator. This is my company. Okay. Yeah, I do for no details. Yeah. So you look like me, you're impersonating a police officer. Oh, uh, no, sir, I'm not impersonating, sir. The Chief thinks the whole thing sounds a little fishy. I want to verify your employment. And I'm probably going to have CID look into this, to be honest with you, to see what you're doing. I, I, don't, I, know, Chief, I don't feel good. Chief, Four, six, Chief I, can right you, I can show you my LLC. I can show you my LLC right now. I'll let, I'll let them handle it. At first, Mackey was just cited for unlawful operation of an emergency vehicle. But when the criminal investigation unit started investigating, they learned Mackey had been fired from the Department of Transportation in January, but he still held on to his badge. Mackey turned himself into the Ackworth police on a felony charge of impersonating a public officer or employee. Next, we head to Norwood, Ohio, and this time it's not a police officer being impersonated, it's a child protective services worker. It's June 17th, 2023. A young boy is playing outside of his home around 3.45 in the afternoon when a woman approaches him. Home security video captures the boy sitting on his bike and on a patch of grass next to the sidewalk. The woman talks to him for several minutes, at times putting her hand on his back or touching his hair. The woman, who we now know as Lisa Naccarelli, allegedly told the boy he might have to come home with her, and the four-year-old boy says he would have to go ask his mom. Naccarelli stands on the sidewalk and waits for the boy's mother, Jamie Spradlin, to come to the door. Hello. It's difficult to hear on the video, but Naccarelli tells the woman she's from Child Protective Services. Spradlin says Naccarelli asked if she could come in for an inspection. Naccarelli allegedly showed Spradlin some type of badge and told her it involved a matter she couldn't discuss because of legal issues. 
According to court documents, Naccarelli told police she had been drinking all day and thought the boy wasn't being supervised, so she wanted to scare the boy's parents by pretending to be from CPS. But the Spradlin family believes there may have been more to this, and that Naccarelli might have been trying to coerce their son to leave with her. Naccarelli was later charged with enticement of a child, impersonating an officer, and burglary. Next, we're back in Georgia. This time, we're in Atlanta. Atlanta police officers responded to a report of a crash around 3 a.m. on September 1st, 2023, but then the incident took a really strange turn. What's going on, ma'am? Somebody just hit us at the red light. This is he okay? Husband. Is he okay? Sir? He in handcuffs? Why is he in handcuffs? I can't answer no questions, sir. Hold on one second. Leave him there. 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 As the officer calls for backup and an ambulance for the man who just fell to the ground, the woman is detained and put in the back of a squad car. How did he wind up in handcuffs? I don't know how to put that in my hand. Sir, we just left the strip club. Which strip club? Um, Peaches. Peaches? Okay. Um, I got you. Over on RDA? Yeah. I got you. Okay. Did you guys get into a security over there? Yeah. Sir, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. All I know is that's my husband. Gotcha. Officers drove the two and a half miles to the strip club where they found what appeared to be an officer or security guard in the parking lot. What do you work for? Homeland. Okay. Um, did y'all have some up here a little bit ago? Male and female get into it with anybody? Yeah. Sure Left in a pair of cuffs? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was the story with that? Uh, they were just drunk. Uh, and um, whose handcuffs is he wearing? Mine. He took off. He jumped in the SUV and took off. Officers are suspicious of this story and that the man Terrence Jax said he worked for the Department of Homeland Security. The officer detained Jax while investigators tried to work out what was going on. Here's what I want you to do for me, okay? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take your firearm off your side, okay? Okay. You got uh, just Serpa here? Yes. All right. Place that in my car. I'm gonna detain you for right now. Okay, for Atlanta PD officers search Jax and go through his car, confirming that he's not law enforcement. Who's the radio through? Uh, eBay. Nobody. Okay. That's not a home man radio? No. Okay. The license plate is off of a Bluebird school bus from uh, from Tucker, Georgia. That's how he got a GB tag. Jax was then arrested and charged with impersonating a public officer or employee. And the arrests didn't even end there. The woman who had gotten into the car accident that the police first responded to was charged with DUI and driving without a license. Her husband had an active warrant and he was arrested as well. Our last stop is in Miami, Florida where a woman apparently had her car painted to look just like a state trooper car because she, quote, fell in love with the look. It's October 10th, 2023. Troopers were dealing with an unrelated traffic stop when they saw a Dodge Charger go by with a blue and white light bar that looked like it belonged to the Florida Highway Patrol. The troopers pulled over the driver, identified as Yulia Pugachev, a Florida Instagram influencer with nearly 2 million followers. Her husband was also in the passenger seat. It's hard to hear the conversation between Pugachev and the troopers because of audio quality, but the trooper got back into the patrol car and relayed what was going on to his superior. Pulled over a car, same color team as, a, as us. I think the car is not registered. It doesn't have a value 28 out of Louisiana or out of Florida. And she's still researching. The driver who I pulled over initially told me that she was using the car for a test drive, right? Because she has a dealer tag attached to the car. So when I went back to the same question, she's like, oh no, I'm the owner of the security company that has the labels on the car on the side. I'm like, okay, so then you're using it for business purposes. And she stated yes. The car had a logo saying FSO guard on the side. Pugachev told troopers she owned the security company and had asked a mechanic to install the light bar on the car and for an auto body shop to put a wrap on that was black and tan. 
Her husband owns a car dealership in Hollywood, Florida, and apparently put the dealer tag on his wife's car. That car was last registered in Louisiana years ago. Pugachev was then accused of operating a motor vehicle without registration, missing a dealer license plate, and engaging in the imitation of the FHP marked unit. For Law & Crime After Hours, I'm Sam Goldberg.